Hi, welcome to Friesland First Reformed Church Online. My name's Darren, I'm one of the pastors here on staff and thanks for being with us today. It's the week after Easter and we get to celebrate it all over again because that's what we do every Sunday, celebrate the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. But especially this week because online we're always a week behind in our Sunday messages. So you get to hear what we as a congregation who met here in person in Friesland got to hear about the Easter message. It was great. There's Easter lilies up on the stage and it's just, it's an amazing time of year where we transform the church to a very special, special backdrop and uh, the Easter lilies that are in the background uh, behind Pastor Rob during this service. They were all donated in memory of family members and a lot of people got to take them home. And if you missed being here in person, we missed seeing you. Again, I always encourage you, if you're able, to join us in person because there's something special about the people of God meeting together in person. We get it if you can't meet together in person for whatever reason, but I encourage you if you've gotten out of the habit of going to church and there's really no reason besides the fact that, well, you just haven't been going, to get back into the swing of things. There's no greater time to get back to meeting with God's people than this coming Sunday. It, it's always a good time to get back to church. But again, we understand, and that's why we post our messages online, because we know that not everyone can be with us. And we want to share the love of Jesus wherever we can. So this week, Pastor Rob gives us our Easter message, and I even get to be a part of it as well, which is really cool um, that he let me be a part of it this year. And uh, man, it was a great message from Pastor Rob. So I encourage you to maybe press pause on the video or grab some coffee or a snack and, and sit down, get ready to hear a great message about who Jesus is and why is it important for us to follow him. Would you please join me in a word of prayer as we begin? God, thanks so much for sending your son Jesus, not only to show us the way how to live, but also knowing that we could never measure up. We always needed a sacrifice and you provided that perfectly with your son, Jesus. Once and for all, we never have to do these sacrifices ever again if we trust in Jesus. So Lord, give us ears to hear and a heart to listen today as we hear from your word and just again, gather to revel on how awesome you are. Thank you for being our rock. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here's Pastor Rob with this week's message. All right, this is audience participation time. So we play this game, a version of this in, in youth group, where I'm going to give you some song lyrics, and you have to fill in the blanks for me, okay? And I know you know the words, so don't act dumb, okay? I, I, I know you're going to know this, all right? So let's start with the, the first one here, Denise. So I used to be the kind of guy I could laugh as well as cry with a heart feather soft and summer warm. Since you've left me, I've been faced with emptiness that's been replaced with a heart that's hard and heavy as a... That's one of the words. There's four words. Come on, you country music fans. Travis Tritt, Artie Stewart. Anybody got it? Not many country fans, I guess. Or at least older country, right? 90s? Yeah. All right. Give it to them with a heart that's hard and heavy as a sack, of, sack full of stones. All right. That's your only freebie. You better get the next three. <laughs> all right. You're trying to make your mark in society. You're using all the tricks that you used, you used on me. You're reading all of them high fashion magazines. The clothes you're wearing, girl, they're causing public scenes. I said, I, 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 I'm not. Somebody's saying it, aren't you? Come on, the monkeys. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> we got one back here. Nicole must know it. Yes. Stepping stone. Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm not your stepping stone. I know Stepping Wolf. I, Bad to the bone? No. <laughs> not the same. Okay. All right. All right, Jerry, this is up to you. How does it feel? How does it feel to be on your own 
with no direction home, a complete unknown, like... We got Don. All right. Thank you, Don. <laughs> that was an early hand up, by the way. That was good. I like it. <laughs> I'm a music guy, and I don't know any of these. <laughs> but this song, I mean, it's about losing something and then realizing, man, it... There are some unwanted valleys in, in life after you experience some mountaintops. All right, last one. A winter's day in a deep and dark December. I am alone, gazing from my window to the streets below on a freshly fallen, silent shroud of snow. I am... Yeah, there we go. I am... An island. Yep. All right, and verse 2. I've built walls, a fortress steep and mighty, that none may penetrate. I have no need of friendship. Friendship causes pain. It's laughter and it's loving I disdain. I am a rock. I am an island. And a... Rock feels no pain. And an... Island never cries. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of story, songs about stones, about rocks, and it's how people feel, and it's how all of us feel at, at some point in our lives, right? It, some days it would be easier to be just that inanimate object that doesn't feel even when you get tossed around or stepped on. The, you know that there's a, a collection of 150 songs that have been around for thousands of of years that speak to our current conditions. And these songwriters were also honest and and transparent about how they felt and what they were experiencing, their struggles. But they don't just leave us with the the struggle to wonder and to, to wander. They give us some hope and some direction instead of just identifying and mourning what the the status quo is. And so I'm going to invite you to take the the songbook that you have before you in the pew, not the blue one, the brown one, and turn to the, if you open up into the very center, you're probably going to land in the book of Psalms. And go to Psalm chapter 42. All the, the psalms are, are songs intended for worship. They're not just things that they read. And again, I don't know if we're going to sing these when we get to heaven or not, but this is what we have for now. And in Psalm 42, look again what's going through the, the writer's mind there in verse 3. My tears have been my food day and night. Have there been seasons in your life where all you felt like doing and all you could do was just weep? The psalmist has been there. Verse 5, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Have you had the, just your insides just churning to the point where you just keep asking questions and there doesn't seem to be any answers? My soul is downcast within me. In the middle of verse Six there. Therefore, I remember. And this is what the psalmist remembers. Skip down to verse 8. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. And so I say, God is my rock. But still, there's that question. Why have you forgotten me? Have you ever thought that? I mean, I I know, God, you you are are there somewhere, but it seems like you've forgotten me. Is that true? And here's, skip to that last verse, verse 11. The psalmist is asking the question, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? And here's his resolution. Here's what he thinks. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Turn to one more song for me. Turn to chapter 62, Psalm 62. 
This is one of David's psalms. David, I want to meet David, because this, he was an incredible man, a shepherd and a soldier and a king, a musician and an author. And here's what David writes in Psalm 62, my, fi- my soul finds rest in God alone. That's how he begins this thought. My soul finds great rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. That's his, the, that's his thought, but then it doesn't go on. It comes up with a question. How long will you assault a man? He's still feeling that, that opposition, even though he's declared with his, his heart, God, you are a, a rock man, I've still got questions. We have to claim that God alone is our rock because there's lots of fake rocks out there because you're not going to find rest and peace in all the stuff out there. You're not going to find rest and peace in your abilities or your talents. You're not going to find complete rest in your spouse or your siblings or your friends or your job. And it tells us don't rely on your GPA or your IRA for hope Rely on the rock, on God. We want to sing through a a modern song that has tapped into a lot of those different psalms with that theme. Church, you should know it. Join in as they catch on. When my heart is overwhelmed, I will look to you alone. God, my rock, God, my rock. God, my rock, you will stand when others fall. You are faithful through it all. God, my rock, God, my rock, God, my rock. In the blessing, in the pain. Through it all, you never fail me. You are the strength of my heart. You are the strength of my heart I can rely on you I can rely on you I struggle to believe You have not let go of me God my rock, God my rock, God my rock Carried through the darkest storms You have held me in your arms God my rock Got my rock, got my rock In the blessing, in the pain Through it all, you never failed me You are the strength of my heart You are the strength of my heart I can rely on you I can rely on you You are the joy in my life. You are the song in the night. There is no one that's true. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, Trust in you, Jesus, we trust in you, God, Jesus, we trust in you, 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 God. You are the strength of my heart. You are the strength of my heart. I can rely on you. I can rely on you. You are the joy of my life. You are the song in the night. That is the one that's true. Jesus, I trust in you. Yeah. God, we do trust in you. And 
just hearing those psalms spoken over us and, and even singing in response. There's so many times that we feel like we are alone, that the wind and waves are crashing, that we're persecuted, that even that it feels like you're doing it to us sometimes. But as the psalmist write and as we've just sang, you're our rock. And I, I pray for us that we never forget that. When the storms of life come, help us to not think that we should build our lives on the sand as in our IRAs, our spouse, or whatever that is. These are all great things. But when we have them as foundation, we, we get left wanting when hard times come. Lord, you've said it over and over again, and I just pray that myself, Pastor Rob, and, and all of us here, and all of us watching online, just know that, that we trust in that. We trust in you because there's always a bigger picture. On Friday, it seemed like all was lost, but Sunday, everything changed, and your plans didn't change from Friday to Sunday, but our perception did. Help us to have the right view. Help us to believe the whole truth. And live a life full as you promised. I, I, you said in your word, you came to give us life unto the full. And you've said, I am the truth, I am the way, I am the life. Help us to never forget that. Because you are good and you want good for us. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's continue to dig in God's word Go to 1 Peter 2 today. You can take your scripture out of your pew Bible. It's going to be up on the screen for you. But um, if you don't know and you have a smartphone, you can put the, the scripture on, onto your phone. The app is called Uversion. And there are dozens of different English versions on there. There's a lot of neat tools as well. So sometimes you, you think of the Bible, it's this big book. I don't even know where to start. There's different Bible study plans on there that, for you to, to follow. You can even push the button. And it'll read the scripture out loud to you, and you can listen to it. That is, it's a neat, neat tool that, that you can dig into if, if you haven't heard of that one. Now let's start here with 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to read verses 4 through 6. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him, will never be put to shame. Scripture also tells us the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. These verses that we're going to consider today were written by a guy named Peter. And he was one of Jesus' 12 disciples. He was a fisherman, and Jesus called him to fish for men. Peter, we know a little bit about him. He wasn't really one to hold back on what he thought. We have several New Testament scenes where his mouth was his drive and his brain was in neutral. He was the kind who acted and then reasoned it out later. Peter's the one who literally was walking on water with Jesus. And as soon as he takes his focus off of Jesus, and he thinks about the waves around him, he starts to sink. He's the one who repeatedly and emphatically declared, Jesus, no matter what, I will never deny you. Everybody else may walk away, but I will never deny you. And just hours later, he, he does exactly that three times over. But after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there's a change that happens in, in Peter. P 
Peter's fly by the seat of his pants, uh, that hot one moment and cold the next plan of life gets altered and it gets stabilized and it gets thoroughly grounded in Jesus Christ. When Jesus called Peter from that family fishing net, said networking for the kingdom of God, Jesus knew everything about him. He knew Peter was outspoken. He knew that he was immature. But Jesus also knew what Peter was capable of if he got into his life. And he allowed the Holy Spirit to come into his heart and take up permanent residence. Because as, as Peter writes here about Jesus in these, these verses, the, and he refers to Christ as the living stone rejected by men, Peter's not just referring to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the religious establishment who rejected Jesus and who wanted Jesus out of the picture, not just move to the next town. They wanted Jesus dead and gone because he was swaying people's minds and lives. And Peter's not just pointing then to the secular authorities and the foreign God-worshipping pagans who rejected Jesus. Peter is in that crowd because there was those points where he rejected Christ as well. Peter's rejection of the living stone shortly before the crucifixion then, when he denied him three times over, was a choice. It was a selfish one. It was one of self-protection and self-preservation. He feared for his life. And that's how we tend to make choices in moments too, right? If the ship is going down, we're going to distance ourselves and we're going to salvage whatever we can without incurring too much personal loss. The fear of unknown and fear of unknown futures. Things not panning out as we envision. It, it drives us to, to jump ship from lots of things, right? School, jobs, friendships, marriages. As Peter writes these words, he knows that even though he has rejected Jesus and done that publicly, that God had chosen him to be one of those living stones. But first and more importantly, Peter declares here that God had chosen his son, his one and only precious son, to be the cornerstone of a spiritual house that would incorporate many other living stones in the structure. So Peter takes us back to the prophet Isaiah's prophetic promise that was written 700 years before Christ came to earth, that God would lay a chosen and precious cornerstone. And he wasn't talking about some earthly, physical structure, but this was for a spiritual, eternal legacy. And the prophetic reminder is, and the one who trusts in that living cornerstone will never be put to shame. See, because Peter knows he fully deserved to be shamed and rejected for, for what he did for his denial of Christ. Because again, we we know a lot about that that story. Jesus personally recruited these 12 guys to be his disciples. For three years, they followed him around, and they listened to him teach. They watched him heal and cast out demons. And then as part of that learning process, he sent them out in pairs, and they were doing the same exact thing. They were talking about the good news of the kingdom, and they were healing people in God's name by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you'd think Peter would have caught on then to to Jesus' plan of of action. Because out of that, that dozen, there were three that Jesus poured even more time into. And Peter was one of them. Peter, James, 
and John. But the, the whole class, the whole class of students missed the, the message. The Bible records the, the time when the, there was other two close brothers, James and John, came and they come with their mommy to, to Jesus and they make this request. Jesus, can, can I have the, the left and right seat when you rise to your, your kingdom? And did it. None of them did, because Scripture also tells us, you know, the, the other disciples, they were ticked off when they heard this happen. Why? Because they didn't get there first. They were going to ask Jesus the same exact thing. The disciples were very limited in their vision, and their, their thoughts were oriented on this, this earthly plane in terms of what they thought that Jesus was going to accomplish. The truth of it all was the kingdom Jesus came to inaugurate was the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. And it never was about completely overthrowing all the earthly powers, moving into Rome and taking over the palace. See, the kingdom Jesus brought was one of eternal perfection. And the realities of the kingdom of heaven coming to, to earth, and Jesus was just bringing the preview of what was to come and the pathway to get to that kingdom. A lesson those disciples struggled with, and honestly, we still all struggle with today, is, is this, that we are not made to function alone. We are not made to function as individuals See, that the disciples pretty much so were, were out for themselves. They were interested in being upwardly mobile in the eyes of the world because a lot of them, they were like seen as the scum of society. Fisherman was not a, a desired profession. Matthew was a tax collector. Everybody hated him. So this was a step up for them, and they wanted to continue to move up the ladder of status. And if Jesus was the way to get there, hey, let's, let's follow him. They were looking out for themselves on many more than one occasion. But Jesus' goal was not just to produce a bunch of individual followers and rack up membership numbers. Jesus' goal was to form one unified, continuous group of people who would all have him as their identifying characteristic. Jesus would be the cornerstone then of a spiritual house made of living stones, a structure that would be perpetually under construction. Now, our, our experience, a stone, a rock, it's not alive, Right? Rocks don't have a voice. We don't have to feed them or make sure they have air to breathe. It, you ever have a pet rock when you're a kid? I mean, I, pet rocks are great, right? You don't have to worry about killing it. Um, you, you don't have to feed it. You don't have to clothe it. Uh, they're great. But usually they just have like this certain memory connected with them. And you think uh, about the, the past and the Maybe you take your rock with you, but you're not really going to make any new memories with that, that rock. The, the Holy Spirit inspires Peter here to, to write that Jesus, the living stone, is the one who came back to life after being dead for three days, and he fully intended to share his resurrection life with everyone who would follow him, to make them living stones to bring them back to life again. Have you ever seen a mason work? Have you ever watched them? Let's see if it's going to cooperate. We had some technical difficulties. There we go. Have you ever watched a mason work? And what they can do with a pile of stones is, is easy. And while it may look 
easy to us. It is truly an art to construct a building or a fireplace that's level and square and beautiful and functional. But they don't just take a, the pile of rocks and start stacking them up and slap some mortar on there and then do another row and slap some mortar on there. See how much care he is taking with just one stone. He'll spend a, a minute, 10 seconds just on that one stone, making sure it fits. And, and each stone is a different size, a different shape, a different color. Each one is unique. It's close. It's almost there, but not quite. And he just keeps chipping away until he gets it the way that he wants it. This is so true of what God does to make us his followers. We are part of a much larger project. And no two of us is alike. God has made us unique with different abilities and talents. And God gives us different spiritual gifts when we believe in him. But we need each other to function as the body of Christ, the church, as Christians. Because believing in Jesus is more than just having our sins forgiven so that we can go to heaven when we die and escape hell. Believing in Jesus is about being part of this spiritual structure where the architect is God the Father and the cornerstone of the place is Jesus Christ. And if you want to try to walk through the rest of the the illustration, we could probably also extend the word picture to say that the truth of of God's word and the working of the the Holy Spirit are, are the mortar that holds it all together. Somewhere along the way, hundreds and thousands of years ago, the myth started to circulate that, you know, as long as you try to do more good things than than bad things, then God will let you into heaven. It all balances out when you die. That's not true. Somewhere along the way, people started to believe that that all they needed to do to avoid hell was to to pray a prayer and say, Jesus, I accept you into my heart, and then you've got this confirmed reservation to heaven. You're good. That's not true either. It's more than just a simple prayer. Somewhere in the journey of humankind, people started to profess their their love for for Jesus, but they decided, you know, this is my journey. It's, It's personal. I don't need to be a part of a a church. I don't need to worship weekly. And that too is a lie straight from Satan. Hebrews 10.25 gives us these words of direction and encouragement. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as we see the day approaching. See, meeting together is, is primarily about God, about Jesus and worshiping him. But there's something happens when God's people join together in their joys and in their struggles to be able to get through it and to remind one another, you know, there, there is a day, there is a day when Jesus Christ is going to come back. And it's going to be a good day. Before Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, the the way to stay in step with God was through animal sacrifices, the shedding of blood. Blood had to be shed. A life had to be taken in payment to God for for sin. And along the way, that, that system became mechanical, and legalistic for many, and that personal heartfelt worship and engagement with God got lost in the mix. But God has told us that sacrificial system that that he set up was never meant to be permanent. It was always meant to be a word picture of what I was going to do through Jesus Christ when I sent him. Back to our first Peter, a little later in chapter 2 then, Peter writes this, that Christ 
himself, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. See, it's a good news story, but it's a story that doesn't make sense. Why would somebody else, let alone God, pay for our mistakes, our sins, our offenses against him? It's not logical or even reasonable, but it's true. And if you haven't accepted that offer of Jesus Christ to, to take care of your, your sin, he's here for you, and it, it's free. It, does, it comes with, with no strings, but it does come with responsibility and privileges. And I promise you, it is worth it. Not only will God fill you with his Holy Spirit to mark you as one of his dearly loved daughters or sons, but that same Holy Spirit is going to help you to understand what the Scripture says and empower you to be able to obey God's commands and then empower you to, to serve him within the, a local church but in the world as well. Because the decision in the beginning of the journey is God forming us more and more and more to be like Jesus. We are not passive in the process. We have to cooperate with him, and then we cooperate with the Holy Spirit to worship and to serve. And if you're, you're not sure about where, where to go to church, pray about it. Ask God, where, where do you want me to be? It's not easy by any means. Find a church where God's word is taught. Join them and worship and serve together. Because when you decide to follow Jesus, he is going to take you to places you would never have gone otherwise. <coughs> you will meet people you would have never crossed paths with any other way. Karen and I would have never have gone from Illinois to California to Iowa to Wisconsin and soon to Minnesota without Jesus. That is the only reason. I would never have been to other places in this world on mission trips if it wasn't for Jesus. I would have never gone to the Netherlands. I would never gone to Annadale, Kentucky. Together with you, I would have never gone to New Orleans to do hurricane relief or Iowa to do tornado relief. I wouldn't be going to Mexico and, and Texas, but it's because of Jesus. I started thinking some of the stories representative of, of this congregation. Many of you are seniors. In, in years past, they have gone to places and served before it was a thing to do mission trips. They, they just would go and serve people in, in other states. Without Jesus, Andrew would have never ended up in Africa. And he would never have ended up in Arkansas for more training and found a, a Christian Korean woman. Without Jesus, it would have never happened. Without Jesus, Larry would not join together with other Christian businessmen and ship a, a container of seed potatoes to Africa. Not just for the sake of growing potatoes, but to develop businesses so that people could support their families and their communities. But without Jesus, that, that would have never happen. And there's more stories of what you have done in Jesus' name. See, if you accept Jesus to be your Savior, he's going to take away that, that punishment and that, that sin that you have to, to deal with somehow. And when you trust in him, when God looks at you, he sees his, his son instead. And Jesus will say on your behalf, that one's mine. That's my brother. That, that's my sister. And they are paid for. They are covered. The relationship goes beyond that reconciliation of sin to having the Holy Spirit come in and live in you 24-7, 365, eternally. And that Spirit will bring you joy and peace amidst the chaos of this life. 
There is absolutely no reason that we have to continue to live in doubt and shame. Jesus has made a way. You can close in prayer with me. Precious God and Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for time to be here today. I thank you for each one that is here today. For the kids, for the adults. Lord, you have brought them here. And you know each one of us better than we know ourselves. And that can work both ways. That can be a scary thing, but it can also be a thing of, wow, God, you care so much that you would want to know me inside and out. Heavenly Father, again, you know where our hearts are before you today in our lives. And so if we're struggling, you will hear our prayer. Whether we say it just silently to ourselves or whether we say it out loud later, Lord, we can come to you and say, Jesus, uh, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. And I want you, Jesus, to be that Savior for me. And I want you to take away that, that guilt. I want to take away that, that penalty of, that will separate me from you, God. And I want to enjoy peace and life eternally with you. God, help us because you're honest with us in the Bible. Even when we trust in you, we're still going to, to suffer. But we get to have a different perspective about suffering now. You are with us. And nothing in all of creation could separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. God, thank you. Thank you. I pray this in your precious name. Amen. Thanks again for being with us this week. And we pray that your time with us was encouraging and blessed and, and maybe even a little challenging in your walk. Everyone's on a journey and we're either going towards Jesus or away from him. And I pray that you are, have turned and started walking towards Jesus because he's always there. He's ready to receive you and me to the home where he is creating for us. Hear this benediction today as we conclude our time together. And this comes out of Revelation. Revelation 22, it says, The spirit of the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. It's a free gift. The water of life that Jesus offers you and me today. It's free but it has cost so much. It has cost God, his only son, and he willingly sacrificed himself so many could come to know and love him and live in new life. So often we get discouraged and saying, is he ever coming back? And a little bit further down in that section, he says this, he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming, I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. We hope you have a great week. We hope to see you soon in person. Man, we'd really love to see you in person. And again, keep following Jesus because he's worthy and, and so good to follow. Have a great week. Bye.